Yo guys, what's going on? It's Rose here, bringing you guys our UNPL Season 4 Draft Analysis. Uh, I am your coach of the Las Vegas Rotoms, and I am super excited for this season. I want to thank Danny and the rest of the mod team for letting me in this season. Um, like I said, super, super excited. Danny's a good friend of mine, and I'm, I'm, I'm very hyped to get to uh, learn how these new mods in the Indigo Disc DLC are going to fit into the format that we've known for the main part of Gen 9. Um, bringing back a whole bunch of new mods and a whole bunch of new ones as well. Um, but like I said, I'm super excited for this. Um, we actually ended up with the first overall pick. Now, obviously, there's a lot of really good mods in the format. Things like Pao, things like Dragapult. Darkrai was allowed, which I really wanted to use. Um, however, I did not base my pick off of whether or not something was going to be amazing. I based it off of content. I based it off of clickbait. I based it off of bullshit. That's about it. <laughs> um, but regardless, this thing is really good. Terrapagos is our first pick. Um, Terrapagos is a very solid first mod. Um, maybe not for the 101, but it is a very solid mod, and I'm very excited to use it. This thing is basically a bulky normal with Gen 1 moveset in Gen 9. Um, with, as you can see here, which I want to say thank you to Marcus for the slides, he did a fantastic job uh, on these. Um, as you can see with uh, with the Terrapagos here, uh, it has phenomenal, phenomenal stats. I mean, nothing under base 95 except for its speed. Um, it has 110 in both of its defenses and special attack of 105. This thing is the most well-rounded mod that I've ever, I've ever messed with because of what it does both offensively and defensively, both on the special side and the physical side, this thing is a monster. This thing is a demon, and I'm super excited to use it. This thing gets things like Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spin and Body Press and Flamethrower and like all these amazing moves. Uh, Terra Star Storm as well, which because we can't Terra Terrapagos, it's basically just like a normal type move, but it is still very good. Uh, I believe it's base 100, hits very hard, and with that 105 special attack, we can run Choice Specs, we can run Life Orb. This thing gets Rock Polish, which is one of the few mods that actually gets Rock Polish. Um, so we're able to take advantage of that as well. Um, but like I said, this thing is very, very solid. Super excited to use Terrapagos. This is the clickbait mod. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just super excited to use this mod and what it's going to bring to the table for us. Now, coming all the way back from 1 down to, I think, 14 or 16, and then all the way back from then to now... I decided with the second pick to take Ogre Pond Wellspring. Now, it is it objectively the best Ogre Pond? No, I, I think that Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is probably the best mon out of the out of the four types. Um, none of them are bad. Don't get me wrong. Each of them does something different, and each of them has their own unique uh, usage. This thing, with its ability of Water Absorb at 110 speed, 120 attack. This thing is a very fast pivoter. It gets things like U-turn. It gets spikes. Uh, its signature move, Ivy Cudgel, is super cool because technically it's a grass-type move, but also technically it's a water-type move. Also technically it's a fire-type move. Also technically it's a rock-type move. It changes type based on whatever Ogre Pond you are using. Um, and obviously since we're using the water-type one, we're going to be getting the water-type IV Cudgel. Um, now, like I said, objectively, Hearth Flame, I feel like, is probably the best one, just period. Um with its offensive typing of fire grass it's amazing uh, but for what i have planned uh wellspring i think fits us best i think what this thing is going to be able to bring to the table for us uh, is phenomenal i mean with getting oops like i said with u-turn spikes ivy cudgel gets horn leech and wood hammer it gets knockoff it gets brick break it i think it's play rough i think i want to say i've seen that in the moveset but maybe i'm wrong i'm probably wrong um, but yeah, this thing is a demon. I've, I've always wanted to use Ogre Pond, um, since the, you know, the DLC came out, uh, last year. Um, I've really wanted to use Ogre Pond. I'm super excited that we get a chance to use it. I mean, I've been in a few leagues where I've had the chance at it, and I just couldn't get it done. Um, but yeah, Ogre Pond Wellspring, phenomenal. I think this thing is going to do great, uh, great things for us and for our team. I'm super excited for it, and I hope you guys are too. And obviously, with us having the first overall pick, we have the wheel pick. And we're going to be picking up another mon that I've only used, I think, once. And it was a showdown league a couple years ago, right at the beginning of Gen 9. Um, 
God, that's a weird sentence to say that it's now been like a year and a half since the beginning of Gen 9. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, at the beginning of Gen 9, I used this next mod, and since then, I haven't been able to use it again, just because it always gets taken so fucking early. It gets taken at the beginning of round two, at the, you know, I, I've, I've always been in the middle or at the end of a round, so I've never been able to use this thing as that next mod. Uh, and that next mod, my friends, is Galarian Slowking. This thing is phenomenal. With its dual stab of Psychic and uh, Poison, uh, the absolute amazing coverage that this thing gets with things like Fire Blast and Ice Beam and the like, and a move that, uh, it, you know, it obviously with you know, the uh, Slowking family, they all lost Teleport. Well, the Galarian Slowking and regular Slowking as well uh, they have both decided that if we can't have teleport, we're gonna have something else. So we got chili reception, which is basically teleport, but it sets up the snow. Um, and honestly, super excited to use it. Uh, I love Galarian Sloking. I think it's one of the best uh, defensive walls in the format, just because you can run it bulky with like a choice specs and put out a ton of damage while it's still taking a ton of hits. Um, with, you know, like I said, 110 in its special defense, 110 in special attack, 95 HP, this thing is a demon. Even 80 defense is nothing to scoff at. This thing you can run with Assault Vest, you can run it with Shooka Berries, Culber Berries, all the berries, blueberries. Um, this thing, <laughs> this thing is phenomenal. Hits super hard and takes every hit you could ask of it. Um, super, you know, of course, except for like things of Chan Pao and all that kind of, you know, fun stuff. Um, but yeah, this thing is phenomenal. I think the pivot that this thing is going to create for us is amazing. I think it's going to do some good things for us this season, especially with its regenerator ability, which is one of the best abilities in the format. Um, people have been arguing over what the actual best ability is in the format for what feels like forever now. Um, it's always been between, like, re uh, regenerator, intimidate, uh, I mean, I mean, so, you know, it, it's, uh... It's all, there's always been a debate over what the, what the best ability is, but for what this, uh, what Galarian Slowking is, Regenerator does well. Um, and I'm super excited to use it, like I said. I've, I've wanted to use it for a long, long time. I got to use it, like, right at the beginning of Gen 9, and I haven't been able to since then. I've tried, I've tried, and I've failed. But, in UNPL Season 4, with the third pick for the Las Vegas Rotoms, we have done it. We have secured ourselves Galarian Sloking, and I'm super, super, super excited. Now, for the fourth overall pick, we took Crocodile. Now, I will say, when it came down to this pick, I was very... I was between a lot of things. Um, originally, I was not planning on getting Crocodile, because I didn't think I was going to be able to afford it in the long term with things I wanted down the line. Um, but after looking at it, because I, I always try to take a couple of picks and then start to plan out what I want for the rest of the draft with what uh, with what's left. Um, right around the second or third round is when I start to do that. Um, and with what was left, I was I was in desperate need of a dark type. I was in desperate need of a ground type. I was in desperate need of like a fighting type as well because um, I couldn't figure out a good fighting type later down the line to get. Um, and my buddy Thomas, who's in my front office, one of my best friends uh, online. I lo love the guy. Um, and he's doing great for himself. You should definitely go check him out if you haven't already. Um, with, he pointed out that I can just, you know, with these three types, um, I'm trying to combine them in a certain way. If I, if I looked at combining them differently, I can see, um, I could definitely pick up something and then just get a third, or get a second mod with that third type. Um, and I looked at it, Crocodile was 14 points, which, don't get me wrong, is, ex is a little... It's, it's, it's not expensive for Crocodile, it's just expensive, just period. 14 is just a lot of points. Um, but this thing, honestly, Crocodile is one of the, like, it's such a phenomenal mod. I love Gen 5, it's my favorite generation, it's when I started playing Pokemon way back in, uh, fucking, what, 2011, I think is when, uh, Gen 5 came out, ish, I, I believe, 2010, 2011, I believe, um, because I was, like, 8 or 9 years old at the time. That ages me a lot. Um, but yeah, Crocodile, phenomenal mod, it's, I mean, it's got three really good abilities, two obviously better than the third, between Intimidate and Moxie, and then it also gets Anger Point as an ability, so we can run, like, a bulky, uh, Anger Point Crook, and do some, you know, some sketchy shit with it, um, but what Crook does is, I mean, he sets up Stealth Rocks if we want him to, he can hit Earthquakes, I believe he still gets Knockoff, 
Um, we can run him fast, we can run him bulky, we can run him... I mean, there's a lot of things that Crook can do, and does all of them really well. Um, it can be a Scarfer, it can be a Setup Sweeper with Bulk Up, um, and I believe it gets, like, Scale Shot now. Um, maybe, I'm probably wrong, but I think a lot of things got Scale Shot between these last two, gener you know, uh, DLCs, so I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but regardless... Crocodile is a fantastic mod. This thing hits super, super hard with that 117 base attack. That 92 speed is nothing to scoff at whatsoever. And I'm super excited that I get a chance to use Crocodile for the first time, I think, ever. I do not think in my vast uh, career as a Draft League player, I do not believe I have ever used Crocodile. Um, which is crazy to me because Crocodile is phenomenal. So, um, but yeah, no. Um, Super excited to use this mod. Super excited to see what it does for us. I think this thing, I think that Crocodile is going to do some great things for us. And I'm super, super excited. Um, and of course, back at the wheel, we're going to be taking Florgis, an old reliable fairy type. Something I use a lot. And I think it's entirely because I know how to use it. I understand what Florgis does. I understand what I need to do in order to win with it. I understand the options I have. And with what Florgis is, it is a very fat, with a capital PH, it is a very fat fairy type. Um, with that basically base ADHP and 154 special defense, this thing is one of the best ways to answer to a lot of the special threats in the format, whether that be things like Chiyu or Iron Bundle or Raging Bolt as well. Um, this thing will take all the hits that I need it to and dish them back in good fashion with a 112 special attack hitting things like a moon blast or its grass type coverage um, and I believe it gets things like stored power as well uh, this thing hits super super hard takes a lot of hits it, it falls into the same uh, format as glow king from before um, obviously not with the coverage but it does do similar aspects it switches in to a lot of the special threats that we're gonna be encountering uh, this season, and I'm super excited to see how many hits this thing is going to be able to sponge. I love Florges, I've used it a ton, and I, it has never steered me wrong, and it will not this time. Um, next up, we took Fortress. Fortress, I've used a couple times. I didn't used to like this mod. I thought it was too passive, I thought there was nothing to it. Boy was I wrong. When they introduced Body Press onto this Pokemon, they made it significantly better. With that 140 base defense, and body press, this thing hits super, super hard. It also gets things like Gyro Ball and Bolt Switch and Stealth Rocks and T-Spikes and regular spikes as well, along with Rapid Spin. So this is gonna be one of our main removers alongside Terrapagos. Um, gonna be using this as a remover more often than Terrapagos, but regardless, uh, Fortress is phenomenal. This thing, like I said, hits super hard because of how body press works and because of how Gyro Ball works as well. Um, but it gets some other moves, gets things like Earthquake and Bug Bite and all of these other moves that we're going to be able to take advantage of uh, with the base 90 attack, which is nothing, like, it's not bad. Uh, if this was an offensive mod, 90 would be. But for what this thing is, base 90 still allows it to do some damage. Uh, obviously, with the fire type quad weakness, that's something that we have to look at. And right now, our water type, um, well, it's not exactly resistant to fire types. Um, to put it very lightly. Um, we do have some good switch-ins to special fire types in Florges and Slowking, uh, but realistically, we need something that's going to check those fire types or just some sort of way in order to do so. And we're not going to be doing that just yet. Y'all thought. Y'all thought I was doing it. Y'all thought. I, I got all of you. But we're drafting Hisuian Electrode uh, with our next pick. Uh, this thing is phenomenal as a Terra Captain, which is what we have done. As you can see, we have made it Terra Electric, Fairy, and Fighting. Now, you, how the UNPL works is you pick one stab and two other types. Whether you can use those two other types as a stab or not is up to you. Um, and then how they did it as well, anything six points or under, you are allowed to use the Stellar Terra type as one of your types. Unfortunately, this thing is seven. It just missed the cutoff for Stellar. Really? Damn it. Um, but with 150 base speed, this thing by far is our fastest mod. And with base 80 uh, special attack, you wouldn't think this thing hits super hard. Um, but between the choice specs and the Terra option, 
uh, this thing can hit decently hard. Uh, it gets other moves like Taunt and Leech Seed, and it gets, you know, some cool moves like Thunder, or Thunderbolt, or Volt Switch, or Chloroblast, which is basically a Grass-type Steel Beam. Um, this thing hits super, super hard on that special side, even though it only has the base 80 special attack. If this was any, if this had a higher special attack stat, this would have probably been a much higher point value than 7, and probably would not have been a Terra Captain for me, um, just because of how I would not have been able to afford it, because I'm a broke bitch. Now, uh, next up on our roster, uh, there's a format I wanted to try out this season that I, I've tried in the past, and it's been a long time, but I wanted to give it another shot. We're drafting Rain. <laughs> we are drafting Rain. Pelipper, you've seen it before in Rain teams. You know what it does. This thing is U-turn dot deck. This thing is hurricane dot deck. This is hydro pump dot double deck. All right. This thing with 95 special attack hits decently hard, especially in the rain with that rain boosted hydro pump or uh, weather ball as well. It can be a decent scarf option, even though it's only base 65 speed. This thing can be a decent scarf option. I can run it. Uh, like I said, I can run it scarf. I can run it specs. I can run it boots. I can run it defensive. I can run it offensive. I can do whatever the fuck I want with this thing. I can do as I please. Um, and I'm super, super, super excited to use it this season. Uh, I have not used Rain in a very long time, and I think that's because how I always used to run Rain or any weather was I would just have my entire team revolve around the weather. But what I've decided to do this season is take a team, take take a Rain core of two to three Pokemon, and draft a team that doesn't get hindered by Rain, but can still function outside of Rain. That I don't need Rain in order to succeed um, with my team. And I think so far I've done that pretty well with things like Terrapagos and Crocodile and Ogre Pond can function really well both in and outside of Rain because of Ivy Cudgel hitting like 240 base power between Stab and the Rain Boost. I mean, this thing hits... I, I, I'm super excited to use Rain. And of course, when you draft Rain, you need an Abuser. Now, there's a lot of options, all of which I really wanted to use. I think there's a lot of really good Rain Sweepers this generation. Between things like Kingdra, Barraskewda, Floatzel, Dreadnought. I mean, there's a lot of options that we have. A well-played Bear Tick, Golduck as well, uh, for some really low-budget options. Um, or like I said, there's a lot of options that we had for Rain Sweepers. Um, I've always wanted to use Floatzel. I really have. Uh, but unfortunately, this is not going to be the season where we use Floatzel. Maybe another time, but not today. Our Rain Abuser is going to be Kingdra, which we also have Terrastalize. Now, this thing hits super, super hard. With its 95 across its, you know, main four defenses, um, 85 in speed and 75 in HP, uh, this thing can be very, very solid. With Terra Water, Wave Crashes, I don't see a switch in, in, in this format. I do not see a switch in with Terra Water, Banded, Wave Crashes. I There's only a few switch ins. Ogre Pond Wellspring is one of them, <laughs> and I have it. So, get fucked, stay fucked. Um, now, for the Terra types, I have decided with Water, Fairy, and Poison. Um, poison, just so I can kind of punish those Fairy types that might want to try and punish us a little bit uh, for their sake. Um, fairy, just because it is one of the best... It is the best Terra type you can have. Just period. This thing hits super, super hard. Um, there are some other options I could have done, like Steel or Fighting or, you know, any of those other ones. But I feel like these three give me a good coverage against most of the things that Kingdra struggles with. Um, and honestly, I'm super excited to use Kingdra. I love Kingdra. I've used it a long time ago. I think the last time I drafted Rain was the last time I used Kingdra, way back in, like, Gen 7. Um, yeah, super excited to use it. Um, and I think, as a Terra Captain, this thing is going to hit super, super, super hard. And last but not least, we are drafting Primate. This thing, at 6 points, is a very solid budget fighting type. With things like U-Turn, Close Combat, Stealth Rocks, it gets things like Brick Break, the Elemental Punches, Gunk Shot, I believe it gets like Seed Bomb and Play Rough and all these different moves as well. Um, Primate is a very solid mod. With 95 base speed, 105 attack, this thing as a Scarf option is very good. It's a very solid uh, Revenger as a fighting type. And honestly, at 6 points, I feel like it's a little undervalued because you can also run Eviolite on this. Because of the introdu introduction of Annihilate this generation, 
uh, Primeape is now able to run Eviolite to run a bulkier set. With its base 60 and 70 defenses respectively, this becomes significantly bulkier and is able to run those bulky Stealth Rock U-turn sets a little bit more. Um, more likely than not though, it'll still be the lovable Scarf close combat U-turn gunk shot filler that we've seen from Primeape in the past. Um, but quite frankly, at six points, this is kind of a, a hard one to pass up. Um, I would have, honestly, I would not have minded making this a Terra Captain. However, uh, with how the UMPL works with its Terra uh, system, you have 18 points to draft up to three Pokemon, and with Electrode at seven and Kingdra at 11, that took up all our 18 points, and we just weren't able to make it work. Um, but like I said, that is our roster. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and all that fun stuff. Um, I am super excited for this UMPL season. What do you guys think is going to be the MVP for our team? I think it's going to be between a couple things. I think Kingdra can be really solid if we use Rain properly. I think Terrapagos is an underrated uh, option for us. And I think Ogre Pond can surprise some. In terms of offensive, in terms of defensive, I'm probably just going to say Glowking because that thing sponges all the fucking hits, uh, no matter what it does, no matter what it is. Um, but yeah, like I said, super excited for this UMPL season. Huge shout out to Danny and the mod team for letting me in. Uh, super excited to battle a lot of these coaches. We have a great lineup of coaches. Uh, if you haven't seen the coach roundup, go ahead uh, and go to uh, Danny Max channel. Uh, it'll be linked in the description. Um, like I said, super excited for this season. I absolutely love this team, and I will see you guys in week one of the UNPL. Goodbye.